Well, praise the name of Jesus. Thank you again for joining us. We're back. Let's get ready to jump right into this word tonight. Let's worship the Lord. Father, we just worship you. We just praise you. We just adore you. We just magnify you. We just glorify your holy name. Father, you are awesome and awesome in this place. And so we come to worship you. We come to bless you. We come to love you. We come to thank you for all that you've done and all that you continue to do. We just love you for who you are tonight. Lord, we pray a special blessing upon your people, upon your house, upon the saints of God. Lord, move by power and grace tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Let everyone who's listening and watching be blessed by your word, blessed by your ministry. Father, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in this place and over every nation, every tribe, every town. Let the kingdom of Jesus Christ be exalted with power and great authority. In the nation, over every tribe, every tongue, every nation, every language, every place around the world, let your glory and your power and your kingdom be manifested, Lord, with power. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge you as the person of the Godhead. We acknowledge you that you are here. We ask your presence to continue to permeate this place and saturate this place tonight with your word and the word of your truth, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, uh, 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 we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Holy Spirit, the promise of Pentecost that gives us the Spirit-led life in the name of Jesus. Father, we just glorify you. Jesus, we lift you up. We magnify you, Lord Jesus. You are our Lord and our King and our Savior and our Redeemer and our hope. And we come to you. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for your resurrection power. Thank you that you are seated on the throne of the right hand of the Father, exalted above every nation, and your kingdom is coming with power. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we just exalt you tonight. You are the Father of glory. You are Adonai, the Elohim. You are Jehovah, the Yahweh. The Yehoshua, you are the creator of heaven and earth. And so we bless you tonight. Bless this time, bless this fellowship, bless this time of learning and imparting in your word tonight. For your name and your glory sake alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. God bless you, everyone listening, watching. We'll shout you out afterwards so we can just get straight into the word. We are still continuing part two with the Pentecost and Pentecost power. And our key scripture we have chosen is Luke chapter 17, verse 21. Luke chapter 17, verse 21. Why? In these critical times, we need the power of the Holy Spirit more than anything. The Holy Spirit is key to our life. The Holy Spirit is key to our existence. What we need is the Holy Spirit and His power. And so we're going to talk about this living Spirit-led life. How do I know? My wife and I have been doing it. This is over 30 years of walking with Jesus Christ as Lord. I give Him praise. And uh, 25 years of ministry. Close to 20 years as pastor and senior pastor going on to 15 years. Praise God, but we are so delighted. And God has blessed us with an apostolic network of thousands of leaders around the world, in which my wife and I are, um, are the founders under the Lord Jesus Christ Kingdom Apostolic Global Network, which is around the world. Amen. And we thank the Lord. Also, Power and Glory TV. We thank the Lord. We're the CEOs of that powerful television network that's reaching around the world. And all of our partners and friends who have joined us from the many nations. I know some of them, you are still asleep in your nation all across the Middle East, Africa, and Southeast Asia. But those who are in uh, New York and Washington and throughout the Caribbean, Central and South America, we welcome you tonight. Those who are up to join us and we thank the Lord for you tonight. Most of all, giving glory to the Lord. We talk about this today. Hallelujah. Matthew, uh, let's read Matthew first of all. Matthew 24 and verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world 
as a witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. We are dedicated to seeing this gospel of the kingdom preach in every nation, every tribe, every tongue, every language. Praise the name of Jesus. We give the Lord glory and praise that this kingdom is going forward. What is this kingdom? Jesus is Lord. He has his Holy Spirit, hallelujah, as a witness in the earth. And the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus, uh, you know, is going to get the a rulership of earth again and every human being. Praise God. That is the hope that through the blood, death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, that the kingdom of God will be made manifested in everyone's life. Hallelujah. That is our hope. That is our joy tonight. And we thank you for joining us. We ask you to share this our uh, guest speaker tonight, uh, Pastor Kendall, is on the way, and praise God. But in the meantime, we're going to start to teach on this. So Jesus said, the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. Not the gospel of faith, not the gospel of blessing, not the gospel of, uh, you know, it's going to get better. But Jesus said his gospel of the kingdom is going to be preached. we got to tell the world that Jesus has a kingdom. He doesn't have a dead religion. He has a powerful kingdom. He is king and lord, and he wants every human, black, white. You know, racism is never going to end. Because the only one who can bring an end to racism is Jesus Christ. He's the only one. It's a Racism is in the same category as abortion. It's a disrespect. There are six things that drives racism. Oh, I'm on something tonight as we talk about Pentecost. Uh, but we have to talk about what's going on. There are six things. One... Pride. Pride drives racism. Because a racist said, I'm better than you. When according to Genesis chapter 1, we're all made in the image and likeness of the Lord. Two, racism is uh, built on fear. The only way I could be prideful and want to kill somebody else or hate somebody or oppress someone else is if I'm afraid of what has being placed in their life is going to be a threat to mine. Praise God. That's what really racists. The racists are more afraid of the people they victimize. Hallelujah. Moses, in the time of Moses, Pharaoh was more afraid of the Egyptians multiplying and increasing. You know, in nations around the world, they develop racism and apartheid. Why? They were threatened by the very people they were oppression, oppressing because the, you know, Satan put it in the heart of people to be racist. You know, I want to let every racist know you're on your way to hell. If you don't make Jesus Christ your Lord, every racist is on their way to hell and they're going to burn in hell and the racists who kill millions are burning in hell. Hallelujah. The Hitlers and the Stalins, I said it, they are burning and roasting in hell with all their followers. They might have gotten away from man, but they're roasting in hell. And anyone around the world who chooses that they are full of pride, one, two, fair. Number three, hatred. Hallelujah. And it's more than just hating people. Anyone who, hallelujah, murders and kills their pride. You know, racism is built on hatred. They hate the image of God. Genesis chapter 1 said we made in the image and likeness of God. And God said, let us make man in our own image and our own likeness and let them have dominion over the earth. If I'm a racist or anybody's a racist because they're full of hatred, you think it's you. No, Satan and them wants, you to, wants them to hate the other person. It's no different from abortion. The Lord keeps saying abortion and racism is the same thing. It's the same spirit. Pride, fear, hatred. What is the next thing that drives racial tensions around the world? Well, bitterness, hatred, fear, pride. I had about six things. I'm going to get the others, uh, other three of them. Uh, but there's a systemic, there is a system developed to oppress. That's not my topic tonight, but there's a systemic method to oppress. And oh my goodness, it's built out of anger. That's another thing, anger. Yeah, 
To be a racist, you have to be angry. Now, there are black races, there are white races, there are Indian races, there are Chinese races, there are Asian, Oriental races. I've traveled from here around the nations, and racism is the same thing. It's built on pride. It's built on fear. It's built on hatred. It's a satanic spirit. It's a spirit of murder. That's what I was going to say. Hatred and murder go hand in hand. And you're never going to drive racism out of a racist until the Prince of Peace comes in there. It's driven out of self-hate. When someone hates himself, they're going to hate every other race. And there's no law that can legislate racism. You need the Holy Spirit. That's why this Pentecost is so important. The next thing the Lord ministered to my heart this morning is that he hates systemic racism. Whether black racism, whether you're black panther or some black group or you're an Asian group or Chinese or Indian or white militia group, all is racist. And the Lord began to show me racism is not in the United States only, it's in every country. I'm telling you their class and racism in India. You know, India and Pakistan are fighting. They're one people. North Korea and South Korea fighting one people. Nations in Africa fighting each other one people. Nations in South America fighting one people. In Europe, you think it's different? No, the French don't like the British. The British don't like the Germans. The Germans don't like the, 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 the uh, Italians. It's racism. And the law began to show me. There's only one race. There's the human race, and it's a lost race, and it's a race that needs Jesus Christ. Only the kingdom of God can bring change to a racial world. There will never be change until the kingdom of God invades the hearts and minds of men. And the Lord began to open my eyes, and I began to pray, and he began to show me, Son, there is a systemic system. I said, what do you mean? The Lord said, it's not a white or black thing. It's a satanic thing. Any race that is attacked the most, it's because the greater of the anointing is in that group. I'm going to say some things. Why would the devil spend so much of his resources and energy and attacks against an, uh, you know, an oppressed people? Come on, help me somebody. You better get on here and pray. The Spirit of the Lord is revealing some things. Why is it that Satan would spend so much time developing a system of slavery around the world? One, developing a system of oppression. Two, developing a system of rape. Developing a system of lack of education, a lack of empowerment in this oppressed groups. Why would he spend all of his resources Cutting off banks and financial institutions from empowering a minority people. Why would he spend all of his resources in, you know, indoctrinating religious organizations called churches? Do you know that churches in South Africa supported apartheid to this day? That churches in the South supported rulings and policies? of separating blacks from white in churches in our generation. We're talking about 40, 50 years ago. Systemic. One thing I cannot stand, as the Lord was showing me, is the fact that racism is going to occur. But when it is systemically developed in places of worship, that you have white churches, you have black churches, Hispanic churches, and you, you have all of these separations. And, and in our generations, people of color have to sit in the back of churches, not in the back of buses, in the back of churches. And they read this Bible and they develop theologies and doctrines and teachings that supported racism and it exists today in the world. I have a greater problem in the spirit of the Lord show me. I'm more angered with racist church than racist systems of men. Because see, men are going to be racist and hateful because again, pride, fear, anger, bitterness, satanic roles 
unfulfilled lives. Some of the most dangerous races are more unfulfilled in their lives than anything else. They're empty. They lack of love and void. So you see the officer put his foot on his neck. He is empty. He's unfulfilled. He's unhappy. He's defeated. He is satanic. Full of Satan. Most of all, they hate the image of God. That's the greatest thing. The warfare of racism is a hatred against humanity. Because, hallelujah, they don't understand that God said, I will make you Adonai. The Elohim, the creator said, I will make you in my image and likeness. Whether your skin is black, white, orange, red, whether you have sharp nose or round nose, whether you have black hair or blonde hair, whether you have brown eyes, black eyes, or blue eyes, it doesn't matter. But systemic racism. And I've studied history and I saw how organizations, I wouldn't call them churches, I call them organizations of religion. Supported theology and said blacks are monkeys and of the devil that sat back, not all, praise God, that Native American Indians are worthless and are evil, that Asians are, you know, yellow. But in this hour, the kingdom of God and the saints of the kingdom must stand up against all of it, not parading the street and burning down places. That's dumb. What is that going to do? And in fact, most of the people who are fighting for the rights are not burning down these places. These are tyrants. These are people who are bitter and angry, who are anti-government, anti-God, anti-Christ, anti-kingdom. They are out there doing this destruction, not good law by citizen Christians, white and black who stand. And I want to let you know, see, we, we think we talk about white racism, but there's black racism that needs to be addressed. What is that? Hating the other person of the same race because of the light tone of their color. You have dark skin, you have light skin, you have brown skin. What is that? Racism. It's the same type of racism. Oh, hallelujah. Black racists. It's not all right for people to hate white brothers and sisters of the Lord. That's just as bad. We don't talk about that. Not because there's a history that people have the right to attack our white brothers and sisters, many of you are on this page, and who have helped the fight to help people more than anything. Amen? That's how I can tell you my life. Living in Tennessee, I've had some of the greatest white brothers and sisters who love the Lord, who help me more than anything. I'm here today, some white apostolic leaders who support me up to this day. And call me and we encourage one another in the Lord. And, and it's not about white and black, hallelujah. But there's a hatred that is satanic that is against every race. But there is some reason why Satan wants to fill black communities with drugs and with abortions and with guns and with rap. And we've taken on these demonic stuff. We've taken on as a black race. Rap and hip hop, and we've created this image. Hallelujah. You better share this right now. We have created this image that has caused this problem. What did we do? We took on hip hop. We took on calling, you know, uh, our women whole uh, H's and B's. We took on gangs and gang banging. We took on a culture of, uh, 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 of gang and violence. We've created the movies of black families being destroyed and destructive. We've created the, the films, uh, movies that talk about black gangs. We've infiltrated our communities with drugs and rap and hip-hop that, that, that degrades the race itself. We are responsible as blacks in a lot of cases. We are responsible for where we are today. We cannot blame the whites, the Hispanic, the Oriental. We need to stop pointing fingers and blaming. And we have to take responsibility that we need to take the opportunities that are available. We need to be respectful. We need to educate ourselves. What the civil rights have started, we have thrown most of it down the toilet because of this generation that is rebellious 
and disobedient and dysfunctional. Not all, but we have to break this dysfunction out of black families. We need to break this dysfunction out of black communities. We have to break this black um, the dysfunction that we operate under. Because we have equal opportunity in this state. Why do I say that? Because you could go on the internet and find everything you need to empower your brain. You could get a whole degree on the internet today. You can learn on any subject. You can empower yourself on any subject and topic. Get off of the gangster rap and get into a book. Get off the uh, internet and Instagram flashing gang symbols and flashing hair and material things and get into a book. Get into education. Get into family values. Get into values. This is my message tonight, but the Holy Spirit has me going here. We need to restore values. Kingdom values. That's the solution to racism. Rise above the demonic attack. Our black churches need to get more empowered. Our black churches, many of them, we call them black churches. It shouldn't be a black church. It should be the church of Jesus Christ. We got to get out of this emotionalism in our black churches. We need to get back to sound teaching of the word of God in our churches. And we need to empower our people. Hallelujah. And we need to challenge them to arise in their communities and be the leaders. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And our young people, young blacks and whatever race you are, need to stop seeing violence and murder and drug dealers and drug pushers and pimps and prostitutes and twerking and shaking your booty. Hallelujah. We need to get that nonsense off our TV and get those imagery out of our communities so that our people can arise. Pastor Kendall, are you ready? If the only thing blacks can do is shake their self and twerk, and that's what we are known for. If the only thing we know for hip-hop and twerking and shaking and getting down, that is useless and worthless. We need to change this imagery for the world to see. Alexa, the world will never respect you if you don't respect yourself. Don't expect a black man, white man, red man, yellow man, green man, whatever type of man... Or woman to respect you if you don't respect yourselves. We need to change our culture. Amen. We need to introduce the culture of the kingdom of God in whites, black, Hispanics, Native American, Indians, and Asian. And we are to lift up the name of Jesus. But I'm here to tell you tonight, Pastor Kendall, are you ready? We can only do that through the Holy Spirit. It's only the Holy Spirit that can take a gangster. And make him a gospel preacher. A crackhead. And make him a Christian. An atheist and make him an apostle. Praise God. A hip hop singer and make him a holy, holy ghost on fire man or woman of God. An abuser. To a mother and father. We have to change this culture. Tonight we're going to be continuing the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Are you ready? If he's not coming on, I'm going to preach tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Every nation, every tongue, every tribe. You better get on this tonight. I'm going to preach tonight. The Holy Spirit. Luke 17 and 21. you like this, share this. Give me a thumbs up. Let me just let you know. What are we talking about? We're talking about the Holy Spirit. So there's nothing that can change the heart of a man like the Holy Spirit. Racism, sexism, abuse, bitterness, hate, dead religion cannot be changed only but by the Holy Spirit. You can parade all you want and burn down buildings. That's dumb. That's not going to change anything. It's going to make it worse. Hallelujah. The world is going to lose respect for the fight. We're going to lose focus for what the world really needs to see. Pastor Kendall, let's go. The world needs to see the light of Christ. And I'm challenging. I'm looking for the black churches. Where are the black churches? Where are the Hispanic churches? 
Where, where are the charismatic churches? Where are the white churches? Black, white, all. Where is the church? The church must arise in this hour. Hallelujah. And let the world see we are unified. We are peaceful. We stand against injustice. Not only racism, but abortion. How many people have died to abortion since Roe versus Wade? Huh? Come on, Pastor Kendall. Let me add you here. Praise the Lord. Let's see how to get you on here. Praise the name of Jesus. We got to fight this thing. We got to fight. Pastor, let's see. I'm trying to get you on here. Thank you all for joining. I see so many of you. Uh, let's see. Watching. He's supposed to be able to be added on here. Yep. Stay with me. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. What I'm going to do, people of God, I am going to ask you to join us. Stay on. I'm going to go off and come back on. And I'm going to bring Pastor Kendall. We're going to be talking about the power of the Holy Spirit. Please join us and come back on. We're going to talk more about what's happening. I need to invite him and get him on here. So please stay with us and come back on. Don't move. Don't move. We're going to pray. We're going to talk more about the Holy Spirit to transform the hearts and minds of people. You don't want to miss this. Stay with us.